Our Gospel reading for this morning comes from the 17th chapter of Matthew. It takes place in the aftermath of Peter's confession of Jesus as Messiah, but his failure to understand what that means. Listen now for what the Spirit may say to us through these words. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and his brother John and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking with him. Then Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will make three dwellings here. And the word may mean booths or tabernacles. Uh, One for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, suddenly a bright cloud overshadowed them. And from the cloud a voice said, This is my son, the beloved With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard it, they fell to the ground and were overcome by fear. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Get up and do not be afraid. And when they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus himself alone. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus ordered them, tell no one about the vision until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Because Lent arrives a little later than is typical this year, we've had more opportunity than in some years to hear from Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. Uh, We've had the opportunity to hear him tell us that we must love our enemies and to put anger in the same camp with murder. We've heard him tell us to be salt and light, life givers who show the world another way. We've heard him say that those who mourn, who are meek, who long for a better world, who work for peace, who are looked down on or hated because they do as Jesus says, are those who are closest to God. Because Lent arrives arrives a little later than usual this year, we've gotten to hear more of those core teachings of Jesus during the time between Epiphany and Lent. But it's not as though they were big secrets. Many of us have heard the teachings before. They're very familiar to some of us. Some of us know the story fairly well. We know what leads up to today. We know how Peter confessed that Jesus was the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And how Peter, uh, how Jesus then began to teach his followers that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer and die. And how Peter got all worked up about that and confronted Jesus and for his troubles. Jesus called him Satan and then began to teach his followers that if anyone wanted to follow him, they must deny themselves, take up their cross, and be willing to lose their life for the sake of Jesus and his gospel. And most all of us know that Jesus does journey to Jerusalem and he does suffer and die. If we've been around the church for very long, and if we've paid much attention at all, we know something of the story of Jesus. And we've heard many of his teachings. But as many a parent has said to a child, hearing and listening are not always the same thing. Lately, I've been reading uh, the most recent book by Brian McLaren, a book imaginatively titled, Why Did Jesus, Moses, the Buddha, and Muhammad Cross the Road? 
Christian identity in a multi-faith world. It's a book about the need for Christians, what he thinks is a desperate need, for Christians to develop a very strong faith identity and yet an identity that is benevolent and welcoming and respectful of the outsider. And he relates a story in the book about a dinner or a lunch conversation with a friend of his who happens to be a Muslim imam. And in this conversation, he asked his friend at one point how it was he became an imam and, how, uh, and, and what it was he loved the most about Islam. And after his answer, he in turn asked Brian McLaren how it was he became a pastor and what it was he loved most about Christianity. McLaren began his answer by talking about how much he loved Jesus, the things he loved the most about Jesus. And this led the imam to confess that he really didn't know anything about Christianity except what he'd been told by other Muslims. And he was delighted to hear McLaren talk about Jesus. When you speak of loving Jesus, he says, it fills my heart with joy. We Muslims love Jesus too. We believe he is a great prophet. And we love him dearly. So we have this in common. We both love Jesus. Now McLaren notes that at this point he could have entered into an argument about the need to think of Jesus as more than just a prophet. But instead, he asked his friend to explain to him what Muslims meant when they said Jesus was a great prophet. And he answered that, that Jesus' example and teachings must be followed. That God would judge us by such a measure. McLaren was struck by an irony here, and he writes this. We Christians believe that Jesus was more than a prophet, but that means all too often, and for all too many of us, that his life and teachings can be largely ignored. As long as we believe certain things about his divinity, his death and resurrection, maybe with some auxiliary beliefs about, depending on our denomination, Mary, Peter, or the Bible, we're Christians in good standing, no questions asked. But then I thought of Jesus' own words, why do you call me Lord, Lord? but do not do the things that I say. This is my son, the beloved. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the voice of God speaks from the cloud on the mountaintop, it is an echo of the words spoken at Jesus' baptism. Once more, God affirms Jesus' identity for his disciples' benefits and for our benefit. But God adds something new here. Listen to him. Listen to him. Now, at some level, this seems unnecessary, superfluous. If Jesus is indeed the beloved Son of God, well, of course we would listen to him. But the history of the Christian faith is filled with examples of appropriating Christian symbols, but casting Jesus' teachings aside. When Jesus and his cross become divine symbols, they often get enlisted in the service of empire and other causes while Jesus' teachings get ignored. The Emperor Constantine puts crosses on the shields of his soldiers to ensure victory, as will later crusaders. Western nations 
colonize the Americas and Africa and Asia in Christ's name and in our day. Some conservatives say that Second Amendment right to bear arms is a fundamental Christian value, even though Jesus teaches nonviolence. And some liberal Democrats call any Republican who disagrees with them a greedy, vile, slimy, corporate shill who cares nothing for the plight of the poor, even though Jesus says to insult the other is to make us liable for judgment and to say, you fool, is deserving of hell. You know, I think that a vast majority of people, both inside and outside of the church, long for some connection to God, some connection to the divine. But all too often, we are seeking to enlist God in our causes, in our purposes, in our projects rather than being enlisted in those of God. Listen to him. In Christ, God's love and hope for humanity takes on flesh. Jesus makes it abundantly clear that God's love is not for a special few, It is not just for those who are good enough or or faithful enough. God's love is available to all people. But as with any good and loving parent, God does not simply love and accept us. God longs for something better for us and for our world. And so God cannot simply leave us where we are. Our world is filled with noisy voices that promise us wonderful things if only we will listen to them. But if we are to be the people we are meant to be, what we are created to be, if the world is to be, what God dreams for it to be. We must learn new patterns, learn new ways. Things must change. And so Jesus cannot simply be a symbol or something or someone that we believe in. We must listen to him and let him show us the way. As we enter into Lent this week, I hope that each of you will find some Lenten discipline that helps you deepen your faith. And perhaps one would be some time each day to listen for and to Jesus and to reflect on how we as a congregation might do such listening as well. This is my son, the beloved. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. All praise and glory to the one who comes to us in Jesus, embracing us in love, and seeking to show us the way. Thanks be to God.